Hello and welcome back to Remnant 2. Last time we got here to Yesha, went through one dungeon, which was the most uneventful puzzle dungeon possible. And that's about it, that's this whole area. Oh, we also battled the Root Nexus and walloped that. Now we get to go on to the next zone. Ooh. Trying to remember this area, so much of Yesha looks, even though these areas are visually distinct, they end up looking very similar. Because once you've seen one area of Yesha, you're like, oh, okay, I've seen all of Yesha. And there's a number of areas that look just like this. And at that point, I'm just kind of stumbling about going, have I been here? What's in this area? Ah. Okay. This is... Is this the duo boss? I think this is the duo boss. There should be stairs nearby. Yeah, yep, this is the duo boss. I had to think for a second. Yeah, there are so few instances in this game of proper duo bosses, it's kind of surprising. And oddly enough, I miss that. As much as duo bosses and like Elden Ring and other Souls games kind of sucked, I do like them. Just because they're a fun challenge. And they really make you have to kind of adapt to the moment. We could drop down there, but I want to go this way. Ah, oh, of course you're... Oh god, this is a combo I do not like at all. Because... Shocking causes lightnings, lightning strikes to just drop everywhere. And then Displacer will just teleport me randomly, which makes for a real annoying combo. Now it's just Elemental Resist Displacer. This is doable. Unless he does that. Little bit of a bitch move, not gonna lie. Upside is I have my Fargazer fully charged so I can wallop these idiots properly this time. But yeah, that was... That kind of sucked. Kind of wish we'd see more, even though I know we just got more traits in this game compared to Remnant 1. I'd like to see more. Because I think they're just kind of touching the start of what could be some pretty cool stuff. Oh, great. Oh, cool, it's just him. Because the other one died, we don't have to deal with him. Harden Coil, what do you do? 
Reduce all incoming damage by 3% for each 10% missing health. Max 15% reduction. You could combo that with the one ring Bedel was selling that gave you like max 50% HP and 15% damage reduction. You just slap this ring on top of that and you're sitting already at what? 30% damage reduction? Not including the damage reduction you get from armor, which don't ask me how the calculation works. I I don't even think it tells you. Oh, well, damn, it does tell you. Okay, so yeah. If I did that right now off the rip, I would be sitting at, what, 72% damage reduction? That's not bad. It really isn't. Admittedly, then you're operating at half health all the time, but you can build around with some of the amulets to give you more boosts, and you could make a half health build but I think a big thing is gonna be you need a ton of survivability because while tanking is viable I wouldn't be running around tanking at half health even though yes we're on easy I am still not comfortable tanking half health Okay, so we got an item over there. And these paths merge, uh, so we'll just dip this way, get it mapped, and then cross over to get our loot. The unfortunate part is because all these guys are flying, melee is really weird, and so I can't just walk up and bonk one for free ammo. Spirit Stone, that is, I think, skill duration up? It's either that or, oh, I'm out of stamina, cool. Mod power generation by 10%. I think some of these rings realistically need a buff. It doesn't need to be insane, but it does need to be something. Because they're kinda lacking. Oh, don't hit these. They explode. Oh, it's over. Yeah, some of the rings I think are really lacking, and they just fall off way too hard compared to more viable ones. Like, when you look at some of these, it's really hard to look at it and be like, yeah, that's, that's a worthwhile ring to use at any given point. Especially a lot of the Nerud rings. 
After sprinting for two seconds, movement speed is increased by 15% and stagger level reduced by one. If you wanted a very specific ring, Nerud is the very specific and kind of useless ring emporium. That is something I would love to see is... I'd love to see the devs kind of explain the thought process on some rings. Because if they just came out and were like, yeah, some of these are literally just filler, I would actually accept that. I'd be like, okay, fine. The filler happens. And in a game like this, you kind of need some filler. Does it suck? Kinda, yeah. But... I think these games are kind of slowly becoming... A possible like ARPG you know we're ever so slowly inching towards this being like new Diablo a more action focused gear and skill based as opposed to just gear based I think it's a possibility just will take someone to quite literally take the leap on that one and make the game that could be. Okay, so this is just a way around if you want it to be difficult. Oh, that guy. Kind of cool seeing those root monsters show up considering last time we saw him was the DLC for Remnant 1. And I appreciate that little kind of continuity bit. Just like the snake guys we see around here on Yesha are actually root versions of the serpents we fought in Remnant 1. The squidly guys, I got nothing. They're... they're new. I wish we did see, like, Singe and... what was it? Cinder? The duo boss from Remnant 1? I'd like to see kind of them come back as a new duo boss that's Root. But I don't know what the DLC for this is going to be, whether it'll be expanding existing biomes or if we're going to get new locations. Ah, oh, this fight. I know this fight. Oh, wait, not... Th this is a different fight than the fight I was thinking of. Yeah. This one's... Actually, we, we need to switch off. He's... He is gonna be useless here. We need the flyers. Uh... Might have to sit down again, because I don't know how valuable... Fargazer is going to be... Could try Voltaic Rondir? It's an option. I don't like Shock because... 67... or 66.7 Shock. It's not that good. But... In the end, our options are few and far between. Hey, Bandit, we just got that. That's good. Yeah. So, we want 
Bandit. Actually, we'll, we'll leave it on this for now, but we will eventually put Bandit on the Black Maw. See, Time Wave, I just upgraded on my main character, because I was like, I should probably just use Time Wave for the extra damage. Yeah, for now we'll put Bandit on here, it works. 10% chance to put a round back in the magazine. So, as of now, it's like four rounds per mag. Am I complaining? Hell no. That's free ammo. Yeah, I gotta sit back down. I don't know how good the Voltaic Rondir is gonna be. I've used it before, and it's kind of an okay wave clear. But I'm not really sitting here going, Oh, I need to use this all the time. Hit him with that slow-mo right off the rip. I want to get that launched. Yep, gotta run. Now that platform is brokey. And he's breaking the next one. And this platform is going to... Oh wow, I have him for 90 seconds on shock. I did not realize that. Too bad it's only 23 points of damage. I'm not exactly balling out of control here. Oh wow, he didn't even get a goo shot off. I mean, he did, he just launched it, but that never landed. Also, we got Cordyceps. Globby. Yeah, definitely gonna have to check out what the... Uh, the faith seed is because I think you can plant that I can't remember if you can plant that or if you have to there's a I think it's the Thayan seed you can plant and then you get a plant that actually grows and you can harvest it Brightstone, too bad I don't really use them I don't use any consumables I just don't think they're useful nine times out of ten. Like, bleed, I don't encounter bleed enough for me to be like, oh, I need to use a bandage. The only one I use is, like, curse removal, because curse sucks. Alright, let's get rid of these flyers now. 
Let's make our way to our first Tele Crystal, because it should be around here now. Because then we can head back and check out what we can make, because we have enough crystals to make something. Oh, I know where we're going to be. Yeah, we should find, uh... I can't remember her name. Mystic Lady. She'll be around here someplace. I think she'll be more uh, this way. I do miss, uh, what was it? S not Singe. Was it Singe the dragon root boss on Earth? I miss that fight. I remember the first time doing that, that was exciting. And then once you learn how to do it, you just kind of breeze through it and carry people, but it was always fun. I was kind of expecting something up here. But we'll double back and go this way, because... Nah, eh, girl, we'll just keep going this way. We'll find a crystal eventually. They can't just not have one. Kind of wish we had a blood moon so I could at least show you what to look for. But in case we never get one... Ouch. There'll be floating pink wisps in the sky, and you just pop a shot, hit them, and then they just come zipping towards you. And when they hit near you, you automatically pick them up, and then you get the essence. Pretty straightforward. Pretty cool. Wow, one galvanized iron. Big loot in the ruined shack. Yeah, what sucks too is in this run. Oh, I don't even have it. I couldn't get Ford Scatter Gun because the starting area is the not right area. Oh, hey, I know where we are.
Yeah, I have a guide for how to do this because this is actually kind of annoying. I don't like the music puzzles. I think they're a bit tedious. I think this will lead back. I'm left to talk to, I think, this guy when we're done. It is here. Friend Faxultek, it returns. Who are you? Does it not remember? The Faxultek and I spoke of a song, man. Ah, of course. It is not the same Faxultek. Forgive me. The horns, it does not have them. <laughs> a new friend then. Hmm? So what brings it to beleaguered Geisha? I need to find a powerful creature. Surely? Then it treads the very path it seeks. The ancient temple was built to imprison such a beast. It now serves as its lair. Alas, the great water heart which tales tell once opened the temple has been shattered for an age and an age. There is no hope without its song. Yet beware, friend Faxultek, for the Ravager has been killed before. There is none more powerful than that which shakes off death like fallen leaves. Hear the wind, friend Faxultek. It seems... Yeah, this looks to loop together. So we'll clear this out. Because I think there might be a side dungeon along here. But I think we talked to him, the flautist, after we beat the Ravager, and we get an ability actually quite like Time Lapse. Except I don't think it's a perma slow. What it does is it slows an enemy that's in the area and it reduces their damage output by like 25%. So, it's pretty powerful. Is it as good as Permaslow? Eh. Permaslow is pretty great. But being able to just dunk on an enemy and kneecap their damage, especially on higher difficulties, that's pretty good. And if you're playing with friends, you don't need three people running time-lapse. You just need one guy to pop at once. After that, having a couple guys with the Song of Aethir, you're set. You'll be able to shut down enemies so easily. And I think it's kind of risky if you were solo to run both just because you're really doing it just for the extra damage reduction oh, didn't want to hit that, meant to hit map like the damage reduction, I think it applies before you take damage so you can hit your like 80, 80 something, like 85 or whatever damage reduction cap and then have this kick in too. But I think this damage reduction kicks in first? I don't fully understand the order of operations for all this stuff. But I know it'll kick in and if you have Blood Bond, that kicks in as like the last thing because it's damage you take then gets applied to your summons. So, your summons can take a tiny bit of damage. So you can always keep their summon, or like their health a little low so you can heal them. Oh, this is just a side path. 
But yeah, build stuff is pretty neat. And I will say this, a lot of people will go, oh, why don't you just use the one ring Reggie is selling that makes it so no matter the weight class, you always roll like you're light. It's kind of a crutch ring because there's a lot better stuff you can use. If you want to build heavy, there's ways you can build heavy. And the big thing is to understand whether you're actually building as a tank or not. Because that plays a big hand in how you probably should be building. If your job is to be, you know, a challenger just in the face of the enemy the whole time, yeah, build heavy. You're probably not going to be dodging much, you're meant to just be taking hits. So, learn to tank. If you're trying to be like a caster, you can build heavy, but that's only if you're doing like an Archon lightning build, because their whole like floaty around Destiny 2 Stormcaller slash Emperor Palpatine unlimited power type beat. If you're doing that, shooting lightning out of your hands like a real wizard, you can build heavy because your dodge, I believe, doesn't care about your weight class because you're in a skill at the moment. But if you're doing the casting lightning like a wizard build, you need a lot of stuff. That's a you have beaten this a few times and you're playing high difficulties type build. Also because you need a class that you have to beat the game to actually get. Or you have to mooch off a friend. So in reality, you could get it really early. But... Like, I get it if you, like your friend picked this up early and is all the way through it and now you're coming in. But I feel like a lot of people are going to be kind of on the same wavelength and the same playtime-ish. Alright, yeah, because we have to go up there for the next dungeon. And because we didn't encounter a single dungeon all the way through... There'll be one over here, and then one that spits us out back to here. But let's head back to the ward for a minute. Sitting on four grand, we could buy more junk. All right, let's... What do we got? Astral Burst. Oh, that's where that comes from. Okay, yeah, I've gotten that. It's, it's not that good. It's like the uh, radiating bouncing shot from the Defiler in Remnant 1, but not as cool. Tremor... That can be really good if you're fighting ground-based bosses. If not, it's completely useless. Fun, though. Definitely a good support mod. And then, yeah, we're not, we're not touching okay, Helix. We'll leave it for now. Simply because we don't need those, and... We might get more Luminite and then we can kind of do a get everything at once kind of show. Anything new to buy? Oh, Dead King's Memento. Yep. Yeah, we'll just scoop all this up, get it out of the shop. Mostly because Cass's inventory rotates. So if you see it, you should probably grab it because you don't know when it's going to come back. Uh, 
I do need more money, but I should talk to Dwell. Because we could really do with bandit upgrades. We're not going to get a lot of upgrades out of it, but... Plus five, 20% chance. That's better than what we had. Oh, and we can also switch off Voltaic Rondier. We don't need that anymore. Yeah, Constrained Heart. Got that now. All our fancy rings after receiving a benefit from a relic gain two stacks of bulwark. So you could combo that with the Constrained Heart and for five seconds have four bulwark and for ten seconds after have two. It is a option. Is it good? I don't know. It might be decent. Depends on if you're constantly popping relics and at that point you should probably just do something that has a 15 second duration to really maximize. But, since we're here, we'll show off Sagittarius. So, as you can see, we'll get aim at something dark. We have that uh, spiky ring. If you just pull it all the way, 344 damage. If we just tap fire, 249. And if we can land it perfect, yeah, 600. It deals extra damage. It's just the matter of getting it. And now our ability, weirdest system of telling you what you're aiming at. Because I have no idea. What I do is I just aim it and shoot at the thing directly. It's pretty cool. Is it practical? Uh, for most bosses, no. Not at all. For something like the last boss we faced where it's a big thing that stays in one spot, yeah, you could actually probably leverage this bow really well. But that's kind of the kicker is what position are you in to really leverage? Your average zippy moving around boss, like if you're facing the... Uh, what was it? The Night Dweller? Night... Night Whisper? I, I don't even remember. The Ghost Lady. She would be a terrible use. Because she moves so much. Nerud? That big ol' boss we fought? Yeah. Actually pretty good. You just shoot it at his body and just rain the shots down. Cube? Yeah, I wouldn't try it on Cube. But that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.